All right, guys, it's a brand new morning. <clears throat> Episode 17 of the Duck Chronicles, and uh, everybody's happy. We've been up for about, oh, an hour and 15, hour and 20 minutes now. So everybody's had a bath. Everybody's been through one cycle of mucking up the water. You can see they have crystal clear water toward the end of the uh, episode today, which won't take long. We'll see how far down they take it. They might, they might be a little bit easy on it because they've already been in the water. They've already had a bath. They've already pooped it up once. So, uh, but we'll see. I know you guys see chocolate milk there all the time, but you give these guys water. The first thing they do is get in it. The next thing they do is poop in it. And it's just what ducks do. Anyway, everybody's kind of chill. Everybody's happy. Um, if you want to show you, there was where they were last night. Pretty gnarly looking, hard to see. There's a place where it's lit up by the sun the day before. And uh, they've grazed now all the way from that tree, all the way down to here, over. And now they're making another pass back up through there. We'll keep working them back and forth on all this good grass. Anyway, I had some questions, suggestions, thoughts uh, from you guys in the comments that I wanted to address. One was our kiddie pools. There's a kiddie pool with a goose in it over there. And uh, was, you know, why don't you put drains in the kiddie pools? And the answer, because it's a lot of work for no gain. Uh, to, to empty those kiddie pools, we just grab one end and lift and it dumps them out. It takes a couple seconds to do that. And we're putting those pools wherever we want fertigated water, so we have no need to move it anywhere. Those are the smaller size kiddie pools, and we use those for the majority of our needs. Uh, and we do that because you use less water in them, and they're easy to dump. We do have some of the big kiddie pools that are like five foot in diameter and two foot deep, and they're very heavy when they're full. And instead of a drain, the smart thing to do with those guys, get yourself a leader hose of about 15 feet, put it in there, take the garden hose and blow some water through the leader hose. And then once you have water running through there, just lay it on the ground and shut off your main hose and you got to siphon and let it siphon itself out. We do that all the time. I'll have to put that in a future episode. Uh, it's a lot easier than trying to put a drain into a very thin, cheap kiddie pool. Uh, it just really isn't worth it. Also had some comments about the fencing, suggesting we put some tent stakes down, uh, wire ties, all kinds of things into the ground. If we could do that, well, we wouldn't be using center blocks. I'll show you what I mean about rock in a second because we have made more progress on the fencing. I'm going to take you to the other side of the property and show you that. I've also had people ask, can you see a print of the property to have a better understanding of its layout? Uh, when I did my PDC design course, I did a project write-up that's available at Permaculture Global. There'll be a link in today's video notes where you can look that up. And it has a diagram of the property. That design has changed quite a bit, but the overall layout of the property is uh, not going to change. It is what it is. So let's go take a walk here, guys. You got to move. You got to move. See, they're not afraid now. And that's good, but it's also a little harder to move them. So let's talk about what happened yesterday. I completed this fencing. So we've now got it run to the house on this side, up to this tree. And that piece there can just be used as a gate until we put a proper gate in. As you can see, it's gotten pretty stable and pretty straight since we uh, since we completed it end to end. And it's anchored to that tree on one side, and it's anchored to a concreted, jackhammered in uh, fence post stake on the other side. But let's take a look here. I want to show you guys something to give you an idea of why we didn't just put you know stakes in the ground. This little hole right here is a test hole we dug in this area. Barely my foot goes in there, and this this is solid rock I'm standing on. I'm going to take you over to where we were working on the other fence. And over there, you can get a true appreciation for what I mean when I say rock, because I don't think everybody gets it. So, this will kind of give you a layout of the property too, so... Again, there's an acre over there. We've got this side of the property. The duck house is there, chicken house behind the cage. Big long rectangle, basically running east to west. As we come through here, we've got a couple of the adult ducks. That's a 1800 square foot steel frame garage. And there's an alleyway 
between it and the house, but that's fenced so we can fence that off to keep anybody from finding their way through. Got another 800 square foot outbuilding there. Some garden ponds. This is where we're establishing my nursery. I've got water catchment tanks. That was the wife sneezing from her allergies. Uh, water catchment tanks uh, on both sides of this building. So I'm holding over 3,000 gallons of water off that building. That's a little annual garden. That's about all the annual gardening I do. Beehives in the distance. Top swale in my food forest. Boy, the ducks like it when we get an inch of rain and these swales fill up like canals. Uh, they only hold water for a day or two. I don't want to hear another word about mosquitoes and swales, guys. So, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. But when you put swales in on a contour, you don't really have straight lines. You have curved lines. So we come off this side right here of the garage. Got a post here. And we're running fencing. You can see I just ran out of daylight yesterday. This fence... Runs all the way over to that fence of my neighbor's yard. And that'll let us hold the ducks up here, which is the you know the backyard area mainly, the top half of the food forest. And then there's two more swales. This area right here will be the gate. That lets us have enough room. We got to move all this rock. So I wanted to explain to you guys what I mean by rock. This is what I mean by rock. This is what's in my ground. This is nature's concrete. It is actually fossilized ocean bed remains. There's little creatures fossilized in there everywhere we dig it up. Shells, oysters, clams, all types of stuff. And it runs the gamut. You see this? This has had humic acid on it. This has been under tree roots, and I can actually crumble this with my hand. You can see how white this piece is? This has not been exposed to humid acid, humic acid. I've hit this with um, a fiberglass handled sledgehammer, and in trying to break up the pure white stuff, I've shattered the fiberglass handle of a sledgehammer, of a, of a 12 pound sledge. So depending on where you go and whether or not there's been a forest over it, it runs from pretty crumbly stuff you can see again discoloration right there. That orange is where the humic acid gets in. Here's an example. So this is rock, but watch. All right, you try that with the white stuff, you, you tear your fingers apart. So when I say I got rock, this pile is what came out of this ditch. And you know what's at the bottom of that ditch? Solid slabs of the same stuff. You can see it all through there. It's nice and mudded over now, thanks to the ducks. So. Anyway, I appreciate the advice about 10 stakes and wire ties and all, but uh, if we could do that, there wouldn't be a cinder block holding this up. Now, the thing is, guys, the uh, I found the zip ties I need. 36 inches, 175-pound test. They're $6 for 10. I need 20 of them. I ordered 40 of them because I thought it'd be good to have around. So it's a simple solution, 10 seconds a piece to install. And that'll really tighten up the bottom line of the fence without going into two by fours and extra wires and all types of complicated things anyway guys appreciate you keep the questions coming hopefully this gives you a better view of the whole property and where these ducks are going to be spending their days making eggs for us and uh, we'll catch up with you in another episode later please keep your questions and comments coming if i respond in one of your comments with like here's why we're not doing that don't be offended I'm just explaining to you why we're not doing things certain ways because many of your ideas are great. We just have to adapt to our local environment.